Okay, now let's talk about mastering, especially stereo width in mastering. I'm going to show you three tips that you can use to get the best out of stereo imaging when mastering. So you can do this with free plugins, or if you work in Cubase like me, I'll show you the plugins I use. Hey, before we jump in, I just want to make a quick announcement, which is pretty exciting news. Now, since we're talking about mastering in this video, I have something fresh out of the oven that is going to come out very soon. It's a brand new course of mine. And of course, you guessed it. It's all about home mastering. So make sure you're on my mailing list because I'm going to announce the launch date very soon. Now, I'm going to start by saying that stereo imaging while mastering is not always needed. OK, so always listen first before making any mastering decisions, because when adding any types of processing when mastering, it's going to affect the whole mix, you know, the left and right signal all together. So every move counts. OK, so always be gentle with your moves when mastering. Now, the first thing you can do to add a bit more width to your master is to use a stereo imager, which is probably included on all DAWs, you know, like we have here in Cubase. And there's also free plugins that are quite good, like, for example, the Ozone Imager 2, which is totally free that you can download and use. That will add some width uh, to your master. Now, the one I'm going to use is part of Cubase, and it's called the Imager. I can use it as a single band uh, imager, which means that it's going to affect the full uh, frequency spectrum. Or I can also add it as a multiband imager, where I can add up to four different the frequency bands uh, to process and add uh, a bit more width on those bands of frequencies uh, independent from each other. But for now, I'm going to keep that to one single band. Now, plugins will uh, will use different ways to add a bit more width to a signal. They can use delay based processing, which will add left and right uh, delay processing to establish more differences between the two sides. So everything feels wider. However, that can lead to some phase cancellation if used in excess. OK, so always be careful with that. Some other plugins will uh, simply just increase the level of the side information that will also create some stereo width, you know, so that depends on the plugin. It doesn't matter much. The more you use it, uh, the more phase cancellation uh, can happen. And also you can uh, unfocus the main elements of the mix, which is kick, bass, vocals, you know, so all the center elements of the mix can lose impact and fidelity. So this is always something to pay attention to and to listen for when applying any sorts of stereo imaging. OK, uh, but stereo imaging can also add a bit more excitement to a full mix. OK, so let's try it out by using this imager plugin out of Cubase on this mix, uh, which is a song called Cruel Animal by my good friend Tokyo Spears. I'm going to leave the link down below. Go check it out. OK, so what I did here, I have a just a quick width, you know, just by increasing the width by maybe 110 percent or so, which is a very gentle uh, amount of width. And this is the type of moves that I like to do on a full master, you know, be very gentle, because if I add too much, listen to how it's going to sound like. <laughs> Now I'm overdoing it, you know, but you can actually hear that I'm losing focus on the center. And at some point, it's going to start to uh, to sound washed out, you know, and this is not what you want. So let's be gentle at just, I don't know, 109% or something. OK, so just enough to add a bit more width to the sound. When you do it in a gentle way, you're going to get nice results. And like I showed you before, I can uh, make this plugin work in a multiband way. OK, so I'm going to open another instance of the same plugin where I have different bands of frequencies. Uh, what I can do here is to play around uh, with some of these bands. I can, you know, tweak the frequency region it's going to work on. 
and go from there, you know? So let's say I want to add a bit more wideness to top frequencies, uh, like I did here. So I have like 110% of width on the top end uh, above 8K and between 3K and 8K, I did the same, uh, but just a bit less. Let's go with uh, 105 and leave everything else below 3K as is. Okay, so now it adds a bit more width on higher frequencies and all my bass frequencies and low mids are staying put, you know? And I kind of like doing it this way instead of adding width to all frequencies. I think this way it makes it a bit more transparent and it does the job pretty well. So what I can do next, and this is the second trick uh, you can use in Cubase or other DAWs, is to use a EQ in mid-side mode. Okay. So I have a frequency which is part of Cubase, uh, which is a great uh, plugin that you can do a lot with. Now, first, just a quick tip if you're using frequency, you can actually change the resolution of the graphics that we have on top. By default, it comes to a dynamic range of 30 dBs, you know? So for mastering, since I'm doing only uh, tiny moves, I'm gonna bring that to six. My dynamic range, as far as the resolution goes for the graphics, uh, is gonna be way close. So it's gonna be easier to see what I'm doing as far as the amount of moves goes. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm using the MS mode, which means that uh, the band of frequencies is gonna be split in two. So I can EQ the center of the stereo signal and the sides independently from each other. And to do this on top, if I take this band, the fourth band of, on this plugin, by default, all bands are gonna be set up to stereo, but you can change that around by just clicking on those arrows. And now I'm in MS mode. So I have access to the mid and also the sides that I can EQ independently from each other. The cool thing with this one, this plugin also, is that all bands can also be used in a dynamic mode, which means it's gonna act as a dynamic EQ to compress certain bands of frequencies. We're not gonna look into this today. I'm gonna use it as a regular EQ, but in MS mode. So I have the sides where I added a low shelf to just tame down the bass frequencies. Um, and leave the uh, the bass frequencies more towards the center. So on the sides, I'm just taming down the bass frequencies and I'm doing the opposite on the top end where I add a bit more frequencies using a high shelf filter to get more high frequencies on the sides only. And doing this move is gonna increase the width of the stereo mix because I'm adding more volume on the sides high frequencies. Let's have a listen. Okay, I'm gonna add a bit more gain on the sides, on the high frequencies. I'm gonna overdo it so we can hear the difference. Okay, I'm gonna rebalance that to my taste. I like things to be subtle. just enough to feel a bit of width, you know? Uh, so that will work very well. And by using an EQ at the same time, I am affecting the tone, okay? So that can be a good way to go. I can even go a step further uh, using MS EQ on this song. For example, if I wanna just uh, get more control on the low mids, I can actually just make a quick cut on the center only, you know? So let's try that. So I'm gonna bring down you know, a bit of boxiness found at around 400 hertz. Let's go by just one dB or so. And at the same time, I'm gonna cut out of the sides a bit of mid-range where we have a bit more vocals going on, okay? So this way I can tame those frequencies um, out of the sides. Let's try this out. And maybe this way the vocal is gonna be a bit more upfront, we'll see. Let's go down by maybe a dB and a half or so and we'll see how that goes.
so I'm tone shaping my sound. At the same time, I'm also um, giving myself a bit more stereo width on that master. This is an example uh, that I can do on this mix. It doesn't mean that it is the moves to do on this particular mix, but it does give you an idea on the type of thing you can do with MSEQ on the master to get a bit more width. And again, always keep in mind that small moves will go a long way especially when mastering. And this type of MS processing can also be done using a compression, like dynamic EQ, for example. Uh, it can also be done with multiband saturation. But for the most part, I think you get a very good idea on how that sounds like by using an EQ in MS mode. And just a side note here, while I'm using MS mode with this EQ, I did activate the linear you know, processing on these bands, because when I'm adding different filters on the center um, opposed to the sides, I might, I might end up into phasing issues. So that's why I just engage the linear processing so I don't get any phasing problems. It's gonna keep the phase relationship uh, within that band as is. Uh, however, it might uh, create some pre-ring effects. I'm not gonna jump into this rabbit hole. That could be a topic for another video. But by engaging linear phase EQ, it's also gonna take a bit more processing of the computer. So like anything else, if you have this option, you can try it out and see if it does sound better or not. All right, so now the next thing I can do apart from MS processing, is to use the same EQ. But this time around, I'm gonna process the left and right signal differently, like I did here. So let's say I wanna add a bit more high frequencies on this mix, uh, something I can do that will also add a bit more stereo width to the master is to make my boost, my high boost, using the left and right channel independently, like I did right here. So on this band, I set it up to L R, which is left, right, okay? So instead of going stereo on frequency, I just go into left, right mode. So I have access to the left side and right side separately. And I made the same amount of boost, but you know, focusing on different frequencies, okay? So this way I don't get the same uh, frequency boost on the right than I have on the left. Now, it's not something I'm gonna reach for every time I wanna add width to a master, but it's actually something that can work out, you know, depending on what I'm mastering. So let's have a listen. And that can also work well with dynamic EQ, so on and so forth. So by experimenting with these techniques, so you can add a bit more width to your uh, masters. Now, again, I'm gonna repeat it. Always be careful with the amount of moves you make when working with imager plugins or doing MS processing to get more width, you know? And I'm actually gonna say that if you need to add way more width in your masters, maybe you should go back in your mix and fix that up on the mixing stage because there's lots we can do while mixing to add more width to our mixes without the use of imager type plugins, like good tone shaping, good panning, and stuff like that. And actually most of the width I'm gonna get on the master is done on the mixing stage, okay? And that could be a topic for another video. Now, let me know down below if you master your own music and what are your favorite plugins when it comes to stereo imaging and stereo width. Now, click here if you wanna go watch all of my mastering-related videos. Until next time, take care and see you.